Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure, episode number 267. I am your host, Drawn Land, aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Headmaster Dawn. Hey everybody. Jack Bruner. Hey everybody. And Rick Alvarez. Yes, good to be back. And for the first time broadcasting from the vault in front of my nice brand new cases. Yes. So nice. I'm very excited to finally not have a background that's like my, my bedroom. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, you know, it's nice to finally be able to appreciate some of my toys. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you know, that's unfortunately some uh, sometimes we got to do that. You know, it's like, well, where I used to broadcast from, there was no bed. But now my collection room is also a bedroom. So... You know, it, it happens. Uh, but, you know, we're, I apologize. I want to apologize for not being live tonight. Uh, for some reason, a uh, little backstory on this. Uh, my computer updated last weekend. And uh, I hadn't had a chance to uh, go through and, and make sure everything was working. Well, I went to set up for the podcast this evening and um, got everything set up. Uh, it's gave me some issues with my webcam, so apparently uh, my webcam is no longer supported. So I'm kind of having to use my uh, built-in i uh, iCam for my uh, computer. And uh, then whenever I went to click on stream, every time I click on stream, the app that we use to broadcast this show would crash. Uh, but fortunately, it is working and recording, uh, so we are recording this, and then we will up or I will upload it as soon as it's done, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have a delayed episode uh, this evening, maybe early in the morning, uh, because uh, right after the show goes off, I'm going to be doing some streaming, uh, watching. So I don't know if that will affect that. But anyway, uh, here we are, and uh, we are going to be talking about some things tonight. Um, I know a lot of things in the news uh, lately, uh, you know, some merger issues, or not merger issues, but uh, merger talks uh, between both Hasbro and Takara, uh, and also Hasbro and Mattel. Uh, found out earlier today that the Hasbro and Mattel thing kind of fell through. Mattel just said, uh-uh, you know, and, uh, uh, but we're not going to be talking about the mergers uh, actually, but what would happen if uh, said companies were to merger? What we think uh, the benefits and uh, the opposite of that, uh, the anti-benefits, <laughs> the non-benefits of that mm -hmm. would be. Uh, plus, we're also going to talk about um, how to uh, 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 piss off your fandom by putting a political uh, agenda on your toys. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and uh, if we got time, we're going to talk some about uh, Rick's got some stuff that uh, he wants to open up and say what's in the box, uh, you know. And before we do all that, uh, a lot of people's been getting their hands, oops, <laughs> getting their hands on these, the uh, Power of the Primes. You're looking at the wrong camera. Yeah, yeah. Well, th I don't know which camera's working <laughs> here, so. Uh, bear camera with me. two, yeah. Camera two. Camera two. Uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. The power of the primes. This is a sl uh, This is slug, or well, I, I, I refuse to call him slug. This is slag. Um, you know, I came up with that name, slug. Did you? I oh. did. Uh, so that was while I was working at Hasbro, and it was because it was going to be in the fall of Cybertron game. We couldn't use the name slag, so they came back with snarl because they didn't. Understand they you know, looked at the last time that figure got released and they saw, oh, it's his name Snarl, but this other guy's also named Snarl because they looked at the Transformers animated slag, which was named Snarl. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we had to on the, on the spot just come up with a quick name and I said, ADU slug, done and done. And I just want to point out, that, Don, that anyone can see your credit card numbers right now. <laughs> oh. oh. Really? Just unfortunately, not the three digits on the back. Yeah, oh, the God. most important part. Oh God, Doran, can you get that out? I don't know. Well, I don't. I won't have time to edit after this. So, <laughs> oh, God, are you serious? 
<laughs> I'll, I'll have to go through and cut it out then. Yeah, but yeah. So really, okay. Y'all, re- y'all really saw that? Yeah, we could see. Yeah, small. we could see all the numbers, your expiration date, and everything. Oh my God! Please, Doron, take that out. I will not upload it until I edit that out. <laughs> God, I, I didn't even realize. I, I didn't realize you were catching that. I'm sorry, Doron. <laughs> <laughs> So well, I'll, I'll, I will go through and, and see if I can blur that out uh, in uh, in some uh, Adobe fun. Premiere here. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but um, please leave this part in where we talk about it. Yes, that will be that will be. Oh funny. God! Now we'll worry about that all night. See, now we can see the, the back three numbers on it. That's great because you just held it up to your forehead. <laughs> Quick, no, get a new pad. We can't, Don. And uh, no, Don. This well, is uh, since this is not live. You're not screwed. You're you're fortunate. We're not live. So, <laughs> but, I mean, so were, were y'all kidding or not? No, I was kidding. I, I was kidding. Uh, I'm not going to take your numbers. No, I, no. I'm not taking your numbers, Don. I mean, I mean, I mean did you see it? Yeah, of course. I did. Yeah, I like personally didn't see it. I wasn't looking. All you got to do is freeze frame it. I just saw the card. I didn't really pay attention to the numbers. The Russians now have your credit card number. Okay, all right, Duran, can you? Do we need to start it, over then? Or? No, it. I will. I will. I will go through and edit it out. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> You're I, just fortunate that we're not live because if we were live, yeah, that would you would but, you would be really screwed right now. But I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't even think about that because I figured y'all couldn't even see it. Just slow. I, I wasn't even looking at the at, at the screen, so I didn't notice it. So. Yeah, that's that's. that's right, well, th- thank you for making sure I get edited out. I appreciate that. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will go through and edit this. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, power of the primes. Um, any of you guys able to pick up any of these guys? Nope. Didn't see a I single found, one yet. Mm, I found Dreadwing. I saw. I saw. That's the only thing. The, uh, the store I was at had, and no, no other store had any. Yeah. I live in the forest uh the moon of endor and out in western massachusetts i went to uh three walmarts two targets well Tar- uh, targets is about the only one people's been able to find these at so far yeah that's yeah they I, get everything ahead of everybody else because it's like my walmart's like three months behind well they still have like wave one of the last night stuff well, the thing is, I know uh, I was talking to Insane Galvatron on the phone, and he said that uh, uh, he tried the Lexington targets uh, in Lexington, Kentucky, and they were telling him that they have a street date of the 26th. Uh, they weren't allowed to go and get them. They were showing that they were in the back, but they were refusing to go get them for him. Uh, however, oh. on the other side of the state where I live, uh, these targets aren't so... Uh, uh, hardcore about that rule and they happily went back and uh, i didn't personally got not lazy them. you, you uh, mean the hourly employee didn't care whether or not a street date was broken apparently not, <laughs> apparently not. what is this country coming to <laughs> uh but but any at any rate um i know uh, a, a friend of mine who went to the store and uh since i wasn't able to go myself and he uh he picked up several uh and uh, I paid them for him uh, uh, through him, and um, was able to get Slag and, and Dreadwind. He was able to find, I think, one of each uh, of the whole uh, wave of deluxes, and then he was able to find duplicates of Dreadwind, Slug, and I think he had one extra of Jazz. Uh, oh. But... Um, I know some of them are going uh, toward a giveaway, uh, and I want to point this out. Uh, check out Optobotamus's, uh, uh YouTube channel. He's got some reviews of the first wave of the Power of the Primes Deluxes, and uh, there is a giveaway going on right now through our sponsor, CaptureProey.com. Great toys, great prices, great service. Uh, where if you watch the videos for the uh, reviews, Within those videos, there will be uh, some uh, some things. Optimatimus will explain it on his uh, on his YouTube channel. There's a little video, about two minutes long. He explains the rules, uh, and uh, you can win the first uh, wave of deluxes uh, from Captured Prey and Optimatimus. 
Uh, so that's really awesome. If you get a chance to head over, on over there and check that out uh, after the show, please do. Uh, but check out also our sponsor, great uh, CaptureProy.com. Great toys, great prices, so. great service. Uh, also check out Mega Toy Fan. Uh, maximize your collection while minimizing your cost with MegatoyFan.com. You can find Mega Toy Fan at all the popular robot and toy conventions year-round, such as TFCon. Uh, you can also find him on Facebook. Uh, so if you're looking up uh, some great stuff, uh, actually uh, a couple weekends ago at the Indiana or at the uh, Midwest uh, Transformers meetup, I picked up a boxed complete Minty Fangry, G1 Fangry, and uh, uh, so I was really excited to get that. He got he cut me a really good deal on that. Um, so check out Mega Toy Fan and maximize your collection while minim minimizing your costs with MegatoyFan.com. Uh, also, check out our other sponsor, Ripped Apparel. Uh, you can uh, save 10% on your order at Ripped Apparel with 10 with the promo code. Uh, I'm, I am so tongue-tied tonight. Uh, I, uh, You know what? I thought you said Rick Apparel, and I'm like, what? What am I <laughs> yeah, doing? You're Rick Apparel. Yeah. Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! Uh, ripped apparel you can save 10 percent on your order with the promo code tfylp pod uh so head on over there and check out some great stuff matter of fact today uh right now there's a great transformer shirt i really 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 want it uh it is the uh, uh the last prime it's uh rodimus prime holding up the matrix and it's reminiscent of the last jedi uh movie poster uh, so uh, I'd really, really like to get that, and I'm thinking I about see this. heading on over there and picking that up with the promo code TFYLPPOD at like Ripped I'm Apparel. doing now. Yes. <laughs> and how much? How much do you get off? Do you know? Uh, it's ten percent. Ten percent. Excellent. Yes. So uh, Terminus Giganticus. Uh, I know. Whoa! <laughs> My chair broke. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Are we going to have to edit that out no, as well? No. Well, There's just all kinds of stuff here tonight. You know, just great. <laughs> great. Uh, anyway. <laughs> In an attempt to make the shore more exciting, we and, and, and hilarious. Ron's chair. Yes, yes. This just being hilarious. Uh, got in uh, Terminus Giganticus today. Uh, did a live unboxing on the uh, Facebook group uh, at uh, facebook.com slash groups slash tfylp you can go on there and check out the live unboxing that i did uh for fans toys ft20 parts a and b uh terminus giganticus that's the masterpiece uh omega supreme absolutely enormous and absolutely beautiful figure um check that out i got a few little snapshots up there uh, i still haven't had a chance to set up my light box so uh, i haven't had a chance to take some really good pictures lately and uh, kind of got the itch and it's driving me nuts. And <laughs> and that's because you're in a new place. Yes, yes. Can we talk about that? We acknowledge this life-changing moment for you? Well, kind of been in the change here for the last month, but yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's a good change. So, so, so moving on. <laughs> the uh, Terminus Giganticus... Yes. Uh, what's the other one that's coming out? The, emo the, the other MP. DX Gabriel. Right? Gabriel. Yes. Now is that one bigger or smaller than this one? Uh, one it's about the, the about the same size. Uh, 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 now, Terminus Giganticus here. He uh, he clocks in at twenty six <clears throat> inches tall at the top of the uh, uh, the wings. Uh, that is uh, obviously taller than Combiner Wars Devastator. And also Fort Max and Metroplex. He uh, he, they now they they come up to about the top of his head, but with his wings they kind of go up there. Uh, I was able to fit him. I was able to remove a shelf on my Detolf, and uh, he fits in two Detolf shelves. Uh, I've got about I've got him kind of hunkered over and at him, or I'm sorry, he weighed him. Uh, and he weighs in at about 11 pounds, so he's a he's quite a hefty figure. <laughs> nice. And he is the size of a small uh, small child or a baby. Uh, I know that's um, bigger than my niece. <laughs> yeah. My, well, my my girlfriend said that uh, her son was 24 inches long when he was born, so he's actually bigger than uh, than a baby. So. <laughs> 
yeah yeah he's he's quite enormous uh, so let's get on to the main topic of discussion tonight, uh, the topic of mergers. Uh, recently, it was brought out that Hasbro is trying to merger with uh, Takara Tomy. Um, now, now, did we ever, was anyone ever able to confirm that that was a legit story? Because I um, never heard anything. Oh, I, much the only I link I saw was just TFW, and that was it. Yeah, I it's just really it's just else. a rumor. It's just a rumor. Uh, so you know, I don't know. We don't know for sure that they're actually in talks of that. I don't know the reasoning behind that. Uh, maybe there's. I'm sure there's some kind of benefit from it, uh, if it were true. Um, what do you guys think would be a huge benefit from? Hasbro taking over uh, ownership, I guess, of... Well, go ahead, uh, Rick. You, you. Well, benefit, you know, you have to think about it. Benefit to the consumer or benefit to the company? Well, there's two... So, it's twofold. So, I mean, let's talk about to the uh, to the consumers first because we're selfish and we want to know what, what we <laughs> what we would benefit from it. That's a tough call. That's that's a real tough call for me. I can see how it could be detrimental to some collectors. Do you think they would put a moratorium on uh, import of the Japanese version of the toys, say the uh, the Takara Legends? Uh, well, here, here's what US? I think about that. So when two companies merge, they they look at who is redundant, and they downsize in order to recoup some of that money they've put into that merger. And I would say a, a lot of the people, uh, most likely on the Takara end, would be eliminated. Uh, because I would wager to say the cost of living in Japan might be higher than it is in America. And when you do the, uh, the exchange, depending on the rate, uh, it might be more cost beneficial to let go of Takara employees. Therefore, you don't have two different groups making two different decos for each toy. Thus, whatever toy comes out domestically and internationally via Hasbro would be the same deco to come out through Takara because you've eliminated the redundancy of that team in Takara. But logic would dictate because we we all know that the Japanese market is an entirely a uh, different beast than what it is here in the United States. And in order for uh, anything to be, um, I guess, noticeable over there, that has to set itself apart. Um, you know, that's uh, that's why a lot of the Takara stuff has uh, fancier decos than, say, what we get here in the United States. Uh, Takara Tomy pumps a lot more into the figures. Well, I don't necessarily know if that's to set them apart. Remember, it is just as difficult to import Hasbro toys in Japan as it is to import Takara toys into the U.S. and uh, abroad. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, you look at the 1980s, the 1990s, toys were the same. The only difference was the packaging. There were some slight variations here and there, but the toys remain the same. And if you take away the, uh, hey, this collector, Headmaster Don, he's only buying the Takara uh, Legends figures. If you take away that uh, difference in deco, and it's now just a packaging difference, then it becomes, all right, well, I don't necessarily need to go buy the Japanese package. Sorry, Don. I'm going to go buy the Hasbro package because it's the same toy, Right. Thus, you're putting more money into Hasbro's pocket domestically, thus increasing your numbers that way, rather than having a consumer who would only buy the Takara version and not the domestic version. Well, there's also some uh, some things that Takara does that, uh, besides paint, uh, and I'll use uh, uh, Takara Legends uh, uh, Target Master Hot Rod as an example. Uh, it's essentially the same toy as uh, Titan Returns Hot Rod that we got here in the U.S., uh, but the chest is completely new. Uh, it's got a translucent uh, part in, uh, in the chest, plus the chest is hollow, whereas uh, in the U.S. we've got uh, it's more of a solid uh, inside of the chest. 
the and en it, the engine top has a hole for the target master it comes with a entirely new tooling of target master uh and uh, of course the color differences so but again uh it's a redundant position to have someone in the u.s design a hot rod for the for this deluxe hot rod it's entirely redundant to have someone in japan design a deluxe hot rod for their market right when you merge you try to save money so you get rid of those redundancies and that extra special attention to detail that extra special brand acknowledgement that the Takara team has, in my opinion, that would be wiped away. You're going to streamline the whole process in order to be a more efficient company overall, and that's what happens in a merger. Mm. So you're going to say you're going to say goodbye to all those target masters and all those uh, head, you know, special heads that are coming with all the Japanese releases that are forcing the American collectors to not buy. In most cases, in some cases, rather, in some cases, not buy the Hasbro version and instead pay a premium for the Takara version. Why would Hasbro continue that trend if they were to merge with Takara rather than just streamline the whole process? You get the same well, thing in both countries and all countries. We're just changing the packaging to be region appropriate. You just don't want and to shoot yourself in the foot, though, because if that's what uh, is really appealing to the japanese fans and whenever they don't get that anymore uh it's possible that they'll they'll kill off the interest in the brand they're still uh, going to buy play. transformers they're still going to buy transformers whether it comes with the japanese market was still going to buy that hot rod whether it came with a target master or not and that's the reality of it and and to think otherwise is ignorant of how collectors think well, I, my thinking is why why would Takara even bother doing it if that's the case? Well, they're doing it because they're a separate entity right now, and they understand not only can they will they sell this in their own market, they know they're going to produce a certain amount of new units to export. They know that there's an American desire for the Takara version for a more um, premium, shall we version. say, animated animation accurate or historically accurate version of these new generations toys whereas hasbro doesn't necessarily um design along those lines right mm -hmm. so uh, what's your thoughts on this jack i can't really think of anything i think rick nailed it on the head pretty much so it's well not I much mean, that i can really think here, of. here's the thing everyone's thinking about transformers right yeah it's not transformers transformers would be streamlined Think about all of Takara's other brands. Pokemon. All the other properties that they control in Japan and in other parts of the world where Hasbro hasn't uh, created such a large footprint. They, right? they would basically they be want gaining the market all that. Access. They want yeah. the market access that Takara has and all the other properties that Takara has worldwide. That's, I think, the bigger prize than Transformers. Because, remember, Hasbro has distribution rights to Transformers worldwide. They're only missing Japan. And Japan, mm. when you compare that to the rest of the world, that's a very small piece of the pie right there. Yeah. So it's not so much that their they're interest in Transformers, it's the interest in... Well, I mean, we're, uh, the we, it, it's, it's a given because, uh, because, you know, I mean, they are a company. Uh, but... You know, as far as we're concerned, you know, on a Transformers podcast, that's what we're talking about. And, you know, obviously, if you look at the companies as a whole, you know, I mean, that would... I don't even know if My Little Pony would be a thing in Japan, but is it? Depends on if she's wearing panties or not. <laughs> and, that's, and that's something, too, is that I got a question whether or not uh, anyone at Hasbro would be in tune enough uh, to keep up with the Japanese market and produce toys that are highly appealing. And I'm not just talking about Transformers, but I'm talking about things that Takara does that is appealing to the Japanese market. Because, you know, we got things here in the U.S. that appeals to us that doesn't necessarily appeal to them, I'm sure. Uh, and I'm guessing My Little Pony would be one of those. But you know, would that would that even happen? I, I think it has to do more with what the larger Takara portfolio is, and gaining access to all those brands. Uh, 
I think to when you say, hey, Hasbro's going to open the door to bring My Little Pony over to Japan, who's to say that they can't do that now through a distribution deal with Takara, right? Mm-hmm. Who's to say they can't do that now with a distribution deal for Takara to get Star Wars toys out there? They probably have a deal in place with someone out there to get Star Wars toys out there, right? Yeah. Since Hasbro is the uh, you know has the master license for toys for Star Wars, so uh, I see it more as a negative when it comes to the Transformers brand. I see it as a positive for Hasbro. I see it as a negative for Takara because their employees are going to lose their their job. In my in my guess. And I see it as a negative towards the Transformers brand, but as a positive towards all the other brands that that Hasbro has for the Japanese market and all the other Takara brands for the world market. So I can see Nerf being extremely popular in Japan, but who's to say they can't make a distribution deal with Takara right now to get Nerf in, into that market? Yeah. So, Don, what's your thoughts on this? Well, I hate to, you know, sound, you know, like Jack, but I mean, you know, Rick has, a, he, he has the inside information on how all this stuff works. And if, if I'm outside looking in, I can say, you know, oh, this will be good for this or this will be good for that. But really, you know, Rick sort of nailed it. I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be good for some, bad for others. Um, and, and if I, I can mean, interject, I, I really, you know, I just really don't know what to add to that. Here's another thought. Let's talk about masterpiece, right? Who does Takara make those masterpiece figures for? Japan. Mainly are you Japan. Sure? Japan. Well, but are you Asia? sure they they make the? Oh, you're telling me Asia. they make those figures for Japan for the Japanese market? No, Think about the, the cost of the uh, tooling. All right, Jack. Let's break it down. Think I about the cost of the tooling. Do you? If you know anything about manufacturing. You would be hard pressed to say that Takara can make a profit off any masterpiece figure if it was sold exclusively in the Japanese uh, market. I actually didn't mean it. Japan, uh, Japan actually came to mind first, and it, it just slipped off my tongue. But I meant all right, well, pretty much all of. Okay, I'd lost it. All right, but let's 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 go down this this particular line. I know what you're trying to say. Hu- but let's hu- go down this humor, particular line. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, Takara understands that when you design a masterpiece figure, it's not solely for the Japanese market. I would say they're making uh, the first batch, and they're splitting that between the Japanese market and the international market. And then if you look at their patterns of manufacturing, seven, eight months later, they go back and, and reissue the thing. That's mostly for the Japanese market, because they've taken a lot of those units initially, and they've pumped them out internationally. They've sold them to Captured Prey, to Big Bad Toy Store, to uh, Image Anime, all the different stores out there. All right. So when Takara designs a masterpiece figure, they're designing it for, for the rest of the world. When Hasbro then releases that masterpiece figure, they are retroactively paying Takara for half the cost of that tooling. Right. So Takara is keeping that in mind as well. Right. Now, there's some vehicles that. Uh, Hasbro hasn't been able to acquire the license for domestically, I would say most likely because of issues with Mattel and Hot Wheels and Matchbox. That there's certain cars they haven't been able to release over here, right? Um, But for the most part, uh, I think Masterpiece would be affected greatly because now you're you're not going to have the Takara team choosing which characters become masterpiece figures you're going to have the hasbro team deciding which characters are going to be has going to be to call masterpiece figures and the inherent danger in that is not that they're going to make a poor character selection is that they are going to change the design aesthetic because mm-hmm. what is masterpiece masterpiece is a uh representation of how that figure looked uh historically at the beginning with MP01 and as it's transitioned here you know 10 12 years later it is now a a representation of how that character looked animation wise and let's go back to to deluxe hot rod right 
Yeah. Hasbro made their deluxe hot rod. Takara makes their deluxe hot rod to look more historically accurate. If Hasbro's leading the design charge on Masterpiece, are they going to make hot rod or are they going to make the historically accurate hot rod? They're going to make hot rodimus is what they're going to make. Right. The, it's basically so when they're, so when they're the, making MP Springer, right? When Hasbro says we're going to make MP Springer, are they going to design them to look like Springer should look, or are they going to design Springer to look? Uh, he's BMW now, and he turns into a jet. Well, uh, I use um, Power of the Primes uh, Slug as as an example. Uh, you know, historically, this is a very accurate uh, slag, uh, but there's some minor differences. Uh, the frill of the dyno is a little bit uh, to the left. Uh, it's well, yeah. I, I, like I said, there you go. Th- Camera this, ca- this camera's light is on, but I don't know if it's actually working. So it's not doing anything. <laughs> um, You've been staring at the wrong camera the whole show. Well, I've, I'm trying to kind of be in the middle here, so yeah. bear with me. Um, it's got the frill is like really close to the back. I know that you can actually uh, maneuver the the neck to, uh, of the dyno to where there is some distance between the frill and the back. Uh, but historically, he also had wings. The sides of the dyno opened up uh, to form some uh, uh, wing-like uh, features on the back of the, uh, the robot. Uh, the power of the primes, whether it's a cost-cutting measure or not, does not have that. So, so now that that's an gets aesthetic into difference. Uh, transformation, right? Mm-hmm. It's, now it's I don't have that got, figure. So is it because it's is a, it because of the way it transforms? Or? It's essentially got the same transformation as the G one. Uh, I mean, there's you know a, a, instead of the the sliding mechanism in the hands, they fold back, uh, and the tail tucks away slightly differently instead of being on that long uh long arm that just basically folds up under the uh, under the back uh the tail actually folds around and tucks in inside of the legs uh but the same basic transformation is there from the g1 uh for slag and that's that's another endearing part uh to this power of the primes version of the, of the toy okay so your argument is if Takara had done that figure first, I think they would have that deluxe figure, not an MP figure. That deluxe figure would transform more like the original. I think the G1 end, toy. I think the end visual uh, aspect of it would have an even more accurate uh, version. Plus, well, it let, would have probably have chrome on it too. Let's revisit this when Takara announces their version. Because here's what, I, here's what I'm thinking is going to happen with Takara. They're going to do a chrome version. The tail will be chrome. The frill will be chrome. Uh, the horns will be the right color. And mm-hmm. I think there's going to be some retooling on each and every one of those Dinobots when they come out. Maybe not Grimlock. But the four deluxe Dinobots, I think there might be some retooling on those when Takara does them. So we'll come back and visit that, Don. Now, you mentioned some uh, some major negative aspects that could come from it. Uh, from a fan's perspective, Don, what, what negative would you see out of uh, any merger? I guess in the short term, you would have a lot of confusion over, like, not just from the final consumer, which would be us, but also the, uh, your online stores would have to look for new, maybe look for new distribution channels, uh, maybe have to renegotiate contracts, uh, things may not be... that's only if the products continue to be produced the same way they currently are. You know, and you, you actually bring up a good point uh, there, Don. Uh, yeah. The actual because, vendors you know, here in yeah, the U.S. Because they, they might look at this as like, well, if we're changing this now, 
even if nothing really needs to change on the vendor side, they might say, well, we'll just use this as an excuse to renegotiate everything because it's such a big, it's such a big hoodoo. They can make something that they've been wanting to do, but maybe couldn't do because of ruffling feathers or, you know, upsetting the apple cart. They can now say, well, we have to renegotiate because of this great big change. Whether they, whether they need to or not, they can make it part of that process and say, we're not going to give you as much of a discount buying the product or we're going to charge you more for shipping or anything to make up money to make more money to pay for this merger because it's costing it's going to cost them money out of pocket before they start making money off the new changes so if they can get if they can get money from this vendor money from this vendor money from this vendor the renegotiation. I would think, though, that the vendors would actually be hurt more because, uh, for example, Capture Prey, one of the big bread and butters for him is importing the Takara Legends versions of these version uh, of these toys now if those if the takara legends versions are essentially the same thing that we get here in the u.s uh, after a merger that market would die you know and so essentially he'd be offering the exact same thing you can go to walmart and get you know uh, and that would be the point that would be hazardous yeah. point it, it would actually be cutting out the 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 online retailers um, and and by the way, who's selling third party? Online retailers. Online retailers. So I mean, you know, I it's think that, that might be uh, the whole reason why they're doing. Uh, they're even. They're not. About they're, doing. they're not. They're not spending that type of money to shut down third party guys. Deron. That's that's just something of a of a possible benefit down the road. That's yeah. a way to twist the the deal to their advantage so in a long term strategy. Yeah, it's just. I'm looking at it from the standpoint of the merger would be a cover for them to, for the, again, I'm, I'm not saying they would do this. I'm just thinking at what's they, they're going to have stuff they've always wanted to do, but couldn't do either for legal reasons, either for contractual, whatever the case may be. But this, this kind of thing could be a smoke screen to do all the stuff they've wanted to do, but never could quite figure out how to get how to get away with it. Well, what's the stuff that they want to do? Well, well it was like it's like I was saying, you know, they 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 want to lower the discounts that they give to vendors. They want to may, maybe charge more for shipping, so they're not paying as much for shipping, you know, or. If they ship it by if they ship it in the U.S. by say truck freight or rail freight through JBL or something like that, um, they're they're getting money back by not giving as big of a discounts. So like their volume discounts could change. Like you don't get as much of a volume discount now versus then, and they make money back that way by getting more more pennies on the dollar with a lower volume discount. Um, they would make money with maybe not as much international shipping and more domestic, and so they're making more money that way. It's, it's just, again, I'm looking at it from a somewhat somewhat negative standpoint, but all the stuff that maybe they've you know thought in the back of their head, like if we could get away with this, this would make us X Y Z. It's just it's just the way I'm seeing it as a as a. Potential negative, just the confusion, the vendor confusion. Just, it may work out in the end, but during the whole transition process, it'll be a CF. Consolidated freight. Uh, you know, I just. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's just the way that I see it. Um, you know, hopefully, 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 it doesn't come to that because uh, so, I think you know it's. Just, I think it'd just be a, a bad thing all around for collectors. From from our standpoint, if Hasbro <laughs> and, uh, and Takara were to merge, 
I, I just think it'd just be a bad deal altogether. Yeah. I, Here, I think I'll, maybe. Well, I, I'm gonna say this, Rick. Real quick, and I'll, I'll let you go, Rick. I'm just saying. You know how we always talked about him, Rick. You you were a part of this. Everyone always said, "Why not have the GI Joe and the Transformers convention together at the same time?" And we've talked about. Oh, uh, let's let's not get into that. No, 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 no. I'm 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 using it as a parallel. We keep bringing up about why these things should or should not be together. This is the exact same thing with Hasbro and Takara. It's the same thing as GI Joe and Transformers. Some things should not be together because you wind up with a bigger mess trying to have everything in one place. So that, that's Seriously. the parallel that I'm drawing. So then, then Has again, Hascon. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but here, here's here's the thing. All right. I want to hear from Jack because if you look what? around the panel, we got old man Don, we got old man Duran, and uh, man you me. know I'm I'm in my late thirties. So we have Jack, who's who's the young man of the group. Uh, I want to know what your collecting habits are when it comes to Takara products. Do you collect any? Pretty much the only is just masterpiece. I re- I only have like one legend, so legends doesn't really matter all that much to me. But like, say masterpiece, I want more. I'd kind of like to get figures because obviously I don't have any G ones. Well, hardly, but I like to get something. Something to where it represents the G1 figure perfectly. That what Masterpiece does. I like to get a lot more so I can build up my Decepticon army, Autobot army. And I think if this whole merger goes down, like you brought up before, somebody could change the aesthetics, the whole design, whatever gimmicks they may have, accessories, might throw in something odd from one of the newer shows rather than something from older well you know that's not something i'm necessarily opposed to but here here's the th- i'm still see i'm ser- sitting here waiting for a masterpiece uh, armada megatron so uh yeah, but let me ask you-, you jack let me ask you something if you had a takara masterpiece grimlock and a hasbro masterpiece grimlock or starscream which one are you going to get pretty much takara because I mean, I know they're ultimately the same, but one features a lot more, you know, accessories to where it kind of evokes classic G1, whether it be the TV show, the movies, or the comics, because, like, Starscream comes with the Coronation Kit. Obviously, ours never got any. Um, As for Grimlock, you got the whole waiter deal. Um, then you got the crown from the comics, which I'm trying to get into. Sharp like teeth on the those. Takara one. Yes. Um, yeah, it's just those little tidbits, like the accessories that I really like. The collector yes. coins, which I which I love. Yes, I got those too. Those are really nice. And with Hasbro, it's just pretty much we get the base figure. That's it. There's no other gimmicks that you get. Um, well, pretty much the only really accessory you get with maybe a Seeker is like the little pilot. That's it. And it's not even painted and, anymore. Yeah, and there's no connection. It's like, why would I want something like a little accessory that has no point? Because it's gang molded and, they, uh, and it's yeah. easier to include it than just not include it. Yep. So it's just pretty much the whole accessory deal for me is I like something to kind of throw back to the classic cartoons, movies, comics, whatever, um, rather than just having something just blind and, hey, it's the character from the show, there you go. But uh, like I said, I like something to kind of a little throw more in a premier, classical. A, a little more premium than the domestic and, version. And here's the thing. You know, you look at Masterpiece Star Saber, never would have happened if the merger had taken place. If it ever will take place. Never would have happened, right? Beast Wars. It's off-brand. It's off-brand. Yeah. Right? Never would have happened. No no masterpiece of figures for that. Right? I would even make the point that Soundwave wouldn't have happened. Because um, it turns into a but box. 
because he turns and that's exactly yeah, what they told yeah. me when when Takara showed that to us um, I was in my last month at, at working at Hasbro and they showed us the the sound wave the, the side swipe with the new scale and uh, Hasbro was like no it turns into a box kids don't understand what that is they don't yeah. know and, and look how well received uh, it ultimately ended up being mm-hmm. especially in the domestic stuff like release. that but yeah. Oh, yeah. domestically because Takara made it right they took the lead on it and if they're not to take there if they're not there to take that lead then yeah, there's no one there to prove Hasbro wrong yep and, uh, and it was so it so gloriously po- proved them wrong too in my opinion I mean so. it, uh, the domestic release arguably uh, is a little bit better than the Takara release because you get all the tapes with the uh, the, yeah. uh, the the domestic release. The Takara just came with Laserbeak. It's just um, it's just easier to collect, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's easier to collect. Okay, but we talked about the Takara merger, right? As a negative, and and if there were ever to be a Mattel Hasbro merger, there are positive and negatives too. But yeah. the first thing that I think about. If there should ever be a Mattel Hasbro merger, Decepticon He Man. Oh <laughs> man, can you imagine those IDW comics? Can you imagine those IDW comics? That We're was one crossover precipice. I wanted when I was look, younger. Was He Man and Transformers? Look, look what's happening right now in the comic books. Right, we got Rom, Transformers, Mask, GI Joe, uh, Micronauts, and we're on the precipice of Visionaries. Jumping into that fight, <laughs> Dawn is and like, yes. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I mean, we're we're on the precipice. All these storylines have been uh, converging in the IDW comics uh, to my satisfaction because it's very well written. And now, imagine if you add not just He Man, you throw in Wheeled Warriors, right? Does Mattel still have the rights to that? For the girls. To to Wield Warriors? Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a Mattel uh, initiative because it's a vehicle line. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know they even, if they even still, who the rights holders were still on that. Uh, yeah, but I, oh, yeah, but I see. So, I, I, see I definitely would see that be. Wield you know, Warrior versus Mask. He Man versus. G.I. Joe, Optimus Prime versus He-Man for the Matrix of Leadership, right? He-Man picks up the Matrix. He's the only human that can pick it up. He's the only guy strong enough to pick it up. And who would not want to see a team up between Skeletor and Mega- G1 Megatron? Uh, that'd, be, that'd be fun. <laughs> that'd be fun. Third-party product, a, a Megatron that turns into Skeletor's staff? What? That's crazy. How does that even possible? How does that even happen, right? Or like no, Megatron and the Decepticons turning into all the the evil horde vehicles and Trypticon turning into Snake Mountain, right? Metroplex <laughs> 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 turning into Well, hey, and then yeah, and, the, and, and then don't forget you have the whole she rock which would really expand yeah. the female the female character side of that too. You would get more female characters into She-Ra the mythos. Just gem. Why not? Shira versus Gem. Uh, Short fight, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Gem has a synergy. Yeah. So. But, uh, you know, then you have weird things like, uh, uh, oh gosh, Inhumanoids and Hot Wheels. It's like, it's like <laughs> it's a Hot Wheels set. With a giant, with a giant Metlar in the middle, and and the cars are all the Inhumanoids characters, and you have to go around the track and hit the target. And Here, you know, here's here's the thing. Here's what I would look forward to: RPMs, right? I and like one other guy, Sean Tessman, were the only two dudes in the world who collected the RPMs, the Ripums, <laughs> right? I would love to finally see. A Transformer Hot Wheel line, a proper Transformers Hot Wheel line, right? All the Cybertronian modes, right? All the you know the yeah, trans tech line modes, from, like the figures right? from the video games, alternators, absolutely, 
I would yeah, buy I mean, yeah, we'll, that'd be fun. We'll look at it this way. They could bring back alternators under the Hot Wheels line. Yeah. Sure. Sure, why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, you know, all these crossovers, though, but, you know, Hasbro owns Transformers and G.I. Joe, and look how f- infrequently we get a crossover with those two franchises. You know, very seldomly do we even get a nod from one to the other. I mean... Well, here's, here's the thing. That is... You're taking two different toy properties and putting them together. But what is Hot Wheels, right? Hot Wheels is a toy property that 90% of it is based off something else, right? 90% of Hot Wheels is here's the Nissan cars, here's the Ford cars, here's the Tesla, right? Here's the Star Trek cars, here's the Star Wars cars. Here's right? a toilet. Right, so he, <laughs> right. So the, you know, the wacky racers and, and the original designs make up a very small fraction of of the Hot Wheels lineup as compared as compared to real world cars, right? So it's easy to take a brand such as G.I. Joe, Transformers, Mask, and make that into a Hot Wheels property. Because that's essentially what Hot Wheels is. But as far as like combining, you know, you know, putting He Man in the Transformers universe or something other, I just don't that's see it happening. Energy. That's that's yeah. that's a comic book th- situation, yeah. And that's what's happening in the comic books right now, in, in the first strike comic books. You have all the different Hasbro properties colliding right now. You know, you look at the current GI Joe comic book series. Who's who makes up the GI Joe team right now? Roadblock, Scarlet, Snake Eyes, Quick Kick, uh, Rock and Roll, and Skywarp. Skywarp on the Joes. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's GI Joe. He's one of the most badass G.I. Joes there is, because he can teleport. <laughs> right? Is he painted like a Sky Striker? <laughs> no, he's Skywarp. He's got his Decepticon symbols and everything. And you say quick kick, and I think, well, isn't he dead? I'm like, wrong continuity. <laughs> yeah, no, that's Larry Hammer continuity. But I think somewhere in that, he probably came back as some kind of zombie, because Larry Hammer forgot that he was dead or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I stopped reading those books a long time ago. So let's move on to um, another topic here. Um, and this one, I, I want to avoid as much of our own political uh, uh, opinion as possible uh, because Lord knows that we are inundated with it on Facebook and we all have, uh, have uh, various degrees of uh, feelings on the matter. Uh, but... Uh, hot recently, button topic doesn't hot, cover it. Yeah, hot button topic. Uh, but um, this uh, screen share, I'm going to bring it up here on the screen. Uh, I know you guys can't see it, but the uh, the viewers on YouTube can. Uh, mm-hmm. This uh, this is from uh, Sabertron.com, uh, a blow up of uh, the pic that uh, um, uh, was shown. It's right underneath. It's on uh, Power of the Primes Jazz. I uh, believe it's on his left arm. Uh, there's an Autobot insignia, and underneath of it are four... Um, and this is if you're not familiar with the situation here. There are four symbols that are uh, are Cybertronian. And according to uh, a translation uh, of what those symbols mean in, Amer- in English letters, uh, it forms out the letters M-A-G-A. Uh, and... The most relevant thing today that MAGA applies to is Make America Great Again, uh, which is, of course, the Trump uh, campaign uh, slogan. Um, regardless of whether or not uh, what you feel on this situation, um, as far as, you know, well, whether you hate Trump, love Trump, uh, whatever, um, my, my personal thought on it is what the hell is this even doing on a toy? Yeah, yeah. It's a political statement. It doesn't matter uh, how you feel about the politics of it. If you're a Republican or a Democrat, no political statement from any side should be on an action figure. Child's toy. On a child's toy. Yeah, we're yep. we're grown men, except for Jack. 
who collect. Books. Well, and that's let, no offense. Yeah. Let's be honest yeah. here. No, we're grown oh, yeah. men who who you know hunt trying to hunt down plastic. <laughs> well, let's be right? honest here. Uh, this right here, the, I mean, these letters literally are less than a, uh, um, uh, probably a millimeter high. Uh, on, uh, I mean, so it's super, super tiny on a on a toy. So well, not well, likely to be, huh? What if it was a swastika? Exactly. Super, super tiny. Yeah. On, on the door. I mean, so cast in white plastic to blend in with the white. Yeah. Maybe. Um, so you know. The thing is, my point is, is that most ch uh, children who play with this toy, uh, and we know that the toys are designed first for children, they're not going to know what this means. It's just fun, uh, some funny little squiggles underneath the, uh, the Autobot insignia. But Here's the thing. I'm going to stop you right in your tracks, Duran Land. Okay. Have you been to Toys R Us lately? Um, I, online. What? What? <laughs> If you go to a Toys R Us, now, it's not at every Toys R Us, but it's at a lot of them, right? Mm. What's in every Transformers aisle? Anyone know, Don? Uh, not a lot. Jack? <laughs> yeah, usually. I'm empty pegs. If, it's, if it's my local one, it's a lot of empty pegs. Right. <laughs> I'm not talking about a toy. I'll tell you what's there. There's a little um, uh, point of sale display. And it's got a stack of papers in it. And those stack of papers is the Cybertronian alphabet. Oh, yeah. The, uh... Oh, I have not seen those, so I wouldn't know this. Yeah, so every so... time a child goes to Toys R Us, they're able to take one of these little flyers with them and go online or look in the box or look on their movie toys and translate all the little things from Cybertronian into English. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing that, and knowing whether the child buys their jazz at Toys R Us or Target or Walmart, wherever, Captured Prey, wherever, they still got that little flyer. See, I, I didn't know that See, little flyer even existed. Uh, but, yep. you know. It was uh, for the last night, uh, that Primus that they released, it was that whole mission to Cybertron or whatever it was called. I, mm -hmm. I forgot, though. But, yeah, but the, it, thing it, it is, really... the thing is, is that these, these four little symbols... Uh, it, uh, these four little symbols, they they basically spell out M-A-G-A. Um, uh, now, like you said, unless they get this, this flyer from Toys R Us. Um, and Toys R Us's are not everywhere, uh, unfortunately, and, and a lot of our viewership don't have access to a Toys R Us. Uh, so may not, have, may, may not actually have access to this flyer. Um the the likelihood of a lot of children even knowing what these little squiggles mean uh, is very small, in my opinion. Uh, and the reason it's put there, uh, well, a, a part of the motivation of putting it there is so that adult collectors who knowingly uh, buy these things would eventually see it, wonder what those little squiggles mean in Cybertronian, look it up, and exactly what has happened has happened. M A G A. Oh my F and G. What is this? Why is this on my toy? It's W T F. Yeah, it's 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 blown up on Twitter. It's blown up on on the net. It's become an, it become an issue so much so that Hasbro has actually put out a statement on the matter. And and not only did they put out a statement, they put out a statement on a Friday. I'll, I'll, I'll Has, actually Hasbro read. ends their workday. At 11.30 a.m. on Fridays. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll read the statement. And it says, It was brought to our attention that a graphic appears on one of our Transformers figures that, when translated from Cybertronian letters to English, spells out M-A-G-A. -A. Uh, we investigated the issue and discovered that one of our vendors inserted this as part of the design without author authorization. Uh, we are addressing this with the vendor. Uh, we do not intend for, uh, for armed products to carry political messages and apologize to anyone who has who was offended by this message. Um, that, to me, there's at least two things that, that scream problems to me. Number one is editorial. Somebody saw these, uh, these little squiggles, didn't think to actually look them up and see what they meant, and... Uh, and they let it pass by. Um, 
It says, uh, so now, oftentimes it passed designers, by with, without authorization. How f- now, oftentimes designers will put in the initials of their kids or their birth date, something like that. That, that happens all the time on toys. All right. It's just, I don't think that's wrong to do necessarily. You put your initials on it in part of the lettering on the side, whatever. Right. Hmm. Uh, now, when they say vendor, here's the thing that comes to mind. I think of two people that are going to lose their jobs, right? Or one person that's going to lose their job, and the other one's going to be well, the freelancer seriously that worked at. So, typically, a Hasbro designer would be the one to do the deco. And what deco is, that is the paint application all the symbols, the Autobot symbols, the paint in the eyes. In the business, we call that deco. And ty- typically, someone at Hasbro does that. But uh, with sizing down, some of that has been outsourced to a vendor. And what a vendor is, um, it's just it's just a person. It's just a fr- sometimes a it's just one person. A freelancer. It's a freelancer. It's yeah. someone who's sitting at home on their computer. They get an email from a, a Hasbro designer. Says, "Hey, I need you to paint this." in Photoshop and call out all the colors. Like this is going to be white XL12W29. That's the color white we're going to use for this toy. I need you to, to tell me all the colors on it. I need you to paint it up in Photoshop. You're going to send it back to me. I'm going to sign off on it, and I'm going to send it to China. And I'm going to send it to the paint shop to get it done. Now, someone in the paint shop looked at it, and knowing that it came from the designer said, all right, well, it's good. It's good. And I don't think it's the paint shop's issue to double check what the designer's no, doing. I wouldn't think so either. Nor would they necessarily have the brand knowledge to do so. Um, so that vendor, and it, it's not a factory in China who's doing that. It's a, it's a person who obviously in this case must be an American. They're going to get blacklisted from from the vendor system at Hasbro. And the person who signed off on it, got it back from them, signed off on it, and sent it to the factory, they're going to be in some serious shit. It's like, how did this happen? Why did you not double-check your freelancer's work? Yeah. Don, what's... Well, I'm going to bring this up. I'm doing this from memory, so I apologize, but I believe Walkie said on Twitter that when he was working for the Club Magazine... They had asked him when he was using the Cybertronian glyphs and stuff. You know, was anything on there? In a, you know, what was he? What, what did it say? I believe he said. I believe he mentioned that on Twitter that they did double check with him at, at the club magazine to make sure nothing was going out. He wasn't spelling that, out that, sex that, and uh, sex yeah. and violins or right. something. Yeah, right. So, right. so if if the club is doing that and they're checking that because they need to do that. I, this this is Nexus Maximus all over again. But that was my job at Hasbro. I'd be the guy who's like, Rick, can you write this out for us in Cybertronian? That was my job at Hasbro. To we even created a font for it so that we could type in it, right? Mm-hmm. Oh. So, uh, so so I mean, if it's but, if it's if it's like you said, it's, it's someone didn't someone dropped the ball and did not check these. Well, check them. my first thought is that it easily passed by. Uh, the uh, the person who, whenever they get, they got it back from their vendor from their freelancer, uh, my first thought is they got it uh, and saw four symbols and assumed that it said jazz. Didn't didn't look it up and didn't double check it. Uh, that doesn't excuse it, but I think that's that's probably what happened in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think that's pretty much. That's- Pretty much yeah, what happened. It's just this this crap. There's enough of this crap, like you said. We're all sick of the stuff. No matter what side you're on, everybody is sick of it, and, and it does not it does not belong on a children's toy. If you want to make a statement, make a statement on your own property. Make a statement on whatever you do in your personal life. Uh, I think, but the, not the problem. It's the, just, it, it's causing more drama. It's causing more drama than anything. Well, the, needs the to problem happen. arises that is is it goes right back to the statement that I had earlier on, uh, in that, um, 
you know, we see it so much on Facebook. We hear it so much out and about, um, especially on the TV news. Uh, and then I think the final, this is like a final outrage. On the toys that we as collectors collect, now there's political statements on it. What the hell? Yep. So um, here, here's what I would, uh, here's my final thought on this. Uh, it brings negative attention to the brand because it's only a matter of time. Some station somewhere is going to pick Fox up Fox or CNN, CNBC, or someone is going to pick it up and it's going to bring negative attention. And we're heading into the biggest sales event of the year, which is the holiday season, right? And it's bringing yep. negative attention to the Transformers brand, which is one of the biggest money makers for Hasbro, right? What it also does is there's going to be new res new uh, restrictions put in place at Hasbro, right? So it's going to make the designer it's going to it's going to mean more involvement from the designers where they're typically they're already taxed to the limit, right? They're already overworked, and now you're going to put in more steps to make sure this doesn't happen again because of one bad apple. And uh, somebody asked me, somebody very prominent in the fan, I don't think they care if I said their name. Carl Hartman reached out to me and he said, Rick, do you, let me do my Carl Hartman impression. Rick, do you, do you think someone, do you think Hasbro is going to pull these from the shelves or reissue these? He's very tall and he speaks with deep voice. <laughs> and uh, I thought about it and I said, no. I don't think so. Because when they make them, you know, they're making 10000 at a time at least. You know, minimum, they're making 10000 at a time. So the damage is already and, done. And I thought about it, and then I thought, what if somebody does pick up the story, and then the other networks pick up the story too? Because you know, polit politics right now is you know the soap yeah. opera of the day. On out of the water. On cable news. Well, Ricky. so my my advice to all you collectors out there: go buy those jazzes because I think it's a fifty-fifty what happens whether they get pulled from the shelves or whether they stay it's a 50 50 in my opinion well you you say that about it spreading uh i just one of the people i follow on twitter is uh movie bob bob chipman uh who does he's a movie reviewer out of out of uh, i think boston area maybe uh and apparently and he has a pretty wide following uh as a movie reviewer and apparently he he's he even he's heard about it so it's oh. making its way around the the internet as being, you know, Get it's out. that it, it it's that showing up even on a child's toy, right? So it's, and it's what if guys stuck. like um like Pixel Dan pick it up, right? Mm -hmm. Who's got this following? The got Pixel Dan is like just millions of people following him. Just you know, it's just it's just more crap. Again, if someone hadn't deciphered it, we would never know, and it would never be a thing. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, it doesn't need to be a thing in the first place. Well, you can't fault the person that deciphered it because, I mean, oh, obviously no, 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 somebody, no, 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 no. somebody's going to be no, curious. I, but Yeah, no, I, I'm just saying that we would have never known if this person hadn't saw and wanted to translate it. So that there's that. But you mean we wouldn't have known it if we didn't have the internet? Yep. Probably, exactly. Or it would have been on a message board somewhere and nobody would have believed. The would internet. Have the the mm, cause yeah. of and solution to all of life's problems. <laughs> it's just, I think, I think it all just boils down to is we have enough problems with collecting from prices, distribution, quality. Quality control issues. The, this this is supposed to be a fun hobby. That every and every hobby has its downsides and its drawbacks and its little niggling little things that just piss you off. When it starts to feel like work, then it's not yes. a hobby anymore. Mm -hmm. But when it, but when the thing we escape to becomes involved with the thing we're escaping from for no reason that doesn't need to be. That needs to stop because it doesn't do anybody any good. 
Well said. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, well, any you guys have any uh, closing thoughts on on this issue? Not that I can think of. I think we covered it. Yeah, let's just not. Hopefully, it'll uh, pop up again. We're mad. Yes, I I, I personally don't care uh, about the mess. uh, You know, I'm more enraged that if this is a political message, uh, why did the person who actually uh, was was responsible for this? Why did they feel the need to put it on there? That's my question. Yeah, And, and here's the thing. What's it going to accomplish? It's Other than cost that guy's job too. Yeah, yeah it's, pretty it's much. Like, it's like you did something for that that's going to achieve nothing to help whatever your goal was. Caused issues for people up and down the distribution chain. Caused drama, and nobody likes a drama lot. Well, you know, it's unless it, unless it's something, you know, uh, well, if it's a vendor, I j- uh, obviously you're. You're not as angry if you're disgruntled. I, I don't. I don't understand. You know, Rick probably understands more the uh, the the environment of of vendors and and how they are handled and treated and stuff like that. But I remember, God, it's been 20 years ago. I worked at a grocery store chain in uh, in Florida, and um, Publix. Yeah, yes, actually, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, I remember uh, we had, you know, I was a stock clerk, and we had to pull, uh, me personally, I had to pull several cases worth of Glade Potpourri Spray from the shelf. Now, if you are familiar with uh, the old Glade yes! Potpourri Spray, uh, uh, they had the uh, the floral design on the side. You know, it looked like uh, it, was, it was a picture of potpourri on the side. It was 1998. Yes, there was a empl- uh, there was a dis- God, disgruntled was 20, employee was at, at yeah. it was 20. It was yes, 98 was the year I was born. Yes. Okay. okay. Damn. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. I'm sorry. What 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 was this now? What was this? <laughs> this was Glade potpourri spray. Uh, and the the picture on the side of the can, the aerosol can was a, a picture of actual potpourri. Uh, and the reason that the 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 items had to be pulled from the shelf was there was an employee that was working for I, I think it's S G uh, Johnson Wax or whoever uh, um, Johnson and Johnson whoever produced Glade potpourri spray. Uh, he was on his final day of work, and he thought, uh, and he was leaving the company. He was upset. He thought a great way to get back to the company was to take a picture of his dick and Photoshop it into the potpourri, and it was printed onto the uh, air. Oh, that hands. is right. He, it, it, was, was, it, it was. Don't on, act like you remember that. You were, I, I that was the year you were born. No, I, f- I found out a few years later. I. Yeah, uh, you could probably it's, find it's, pictures it's, of it on the oh. internet. I'm sure somewhere it is. It's on it's the internet. It oh. I yeah. remember the day somebody brought that can into high school. It was my senior year. Mike Scanlon brought it in. It was the day, uh, the first time Cartoon Network had ever shown a Transformers Beast Wars episode on the air. They were showing five episodes back to back. Monday through Friday. That's how I remember that. Yes, and so this this is an actual thing that happened, and it was Penis all can. because yeah, it was all because an employee of the company that was on his way out uh, wanted to get back at the company, and he's like, "This is funny. Uh, this is going <laughs> to cause them some negative press," and he did it, uh. and it did it. It really. Um, of course, I'm sure some legal issues ensued uh, from that, um, but I kind of wonder if something similar happened here uh, with with this uh, um, um, thing on the Power of the Prime Jazz. Could it be that a uh, that a vendor uh, had an issue with Hasbro? Uh, heaven forbid, uh, and maybe thought, hey, I'm going to get back at this uh, at Hasbro and put something that's going to cause them some negative press on their toy. <laughs> and then went out and told their friend, hey, translate that from Cybertronians. What does it say? Yeah. So, mm. 
interesting theory that it got uh, uh, you know it's like hey you know you want to see what i snuck onto the toy you know and and you know it's it could have been a b it could be that that's what happened here um interesting theory you know and and that's what it made me think about it was was an actual experience that i had because i was a stock clerk and it was my it was my job that uh, that day to go and pull all the Glade Potpourri spray. And we had like four cases of it on the freaking shelf, you know. <laughs> yeah, so we had a, uh, had four cases of Potpourri spray that had dicks on it. Um, and yeah. did you have to mail them back or destroy them? Uh, I think they had to go back to the, the warehouse. Uh, I mean, it's 20 years ago. So I... Yeah, I remember <laughs> seeing a top 10 you, list. You think of... they still got them there, Deron? Can Not, you check? That, that store no longer is open. It, they... They opened up the new store about ten miles away, and can you ask if they still have those? Uh, I doubt they do. You can't ask. Well, I found a bottle on eBay for twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, ask them if they got any clear Pepsi too. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you guys have any other? Uh, thoughts on that um rick do you want to do a quick box opening real quick oh yeah uh so you know this is something we were just talking about just something to kind of break up the show um a little bit uh so i've been setting up my collection down here in the basement and i've been breaking out some stuff that i haven't seen in a really long time i've been very fortunate to uh set up my g1 uh this is most of my g1 box stuff um all around me over here and over there. So I just happened to pull um, a random box that I haven't opened in years uh, from my storage area, brought it down into the basement, and uh, this is the first time I'm opening this box, and we're going to see what's let's, in the box. Let's see the box before you open it first. All right, now I did... Okay, I like something huge. Here's the box. Huge! Here's the box. By the way, I, I also pulled this out of storage. <laughs> oh, a, uh, a, a bumper for movie it's, Bumblebee. It's, it's, it's An a actual bumper. bumper. It's a bumper off a car. I don't know what car came off. It's a bumper off a car. All right, so here we go. Got some packing paper there. Ah, very nice. We have a Rock Blister Dinobot. Ooh. Ooh. What are these sell for now? That's rare. This is the Rock Blister Dinobot. First, uh, first, first, first wave, first wave yeah, of Beast Wars. The first wave of Beast Wars those. had all the well, rock, and then they switched to Smooth Bubble, which was oh, uniform. Yep. Right, and and then and then you wind up with like Cheetor Cheetor Red on Rock, Cheetor uh, Green on Smooth. So you had that whole Star Wars kind of variations going on there. This is cool. This is the fractal pack rat. Oh Ooh. yeah, yeah. I've never opened this one. That that was the year. I that's the one year of botcon I missed was Rochester, and John and Carl was nice enough to save me a set and send me a set. Of, I, I paid for it. Of course. What, what are these but, sell for now, John? Four hundred. Uh, four I to five. Even, yeah. I haven't yeah. even looked lately, but it's because I was going to sell mine because I love it so Jack, much. Jack, this came out before you were born. Yep. That, that's that's probably one of that's one of my favorite standalone exclusives from the from the uh, bot cons. We have a AM radio with carrying case sealed. Ooh, nice. Random random that, stuff. That, that is not the enemy. If you're if you're thinking about if you're if you're listening to the audio version, it's not enemy. No, it's the Autobot symbol that flips open to be Optimus Prime space. We have the mini headset radio. Which is just uh, Autobot shaped uh, headphones and a radio. That one's sealed too. We have the uh, Bath Time Attack Pack. I have, uh, <laughs> wow, that's old. School. So this is from the UK. It's funny because I have another one of those. We have a carded reflective patch uh, Firefly. Ooh. Free prize inside. Random, random ass box. Um, oh, here's another random. Uh, we got a uh, slingshot carded. Ooh, one. Yeah. Precision. Yes. 
Um, Slightly yellow bumblebee. Yes, unfortunately. Alternative bumblebee. Hey, oh. there's nothing wrong with the alternative. We have uh, Optimus Prime from Collegeville, PA. The costume. Oh. Thanks. Oh, okay. That's a nice I, I'm starting up. to say, why does Collegeville sound familiar right now? Yep. It's a minute, Let's see. Alternative Optimus Prime. This is a Nissan uh, 350Z. Yeah. That's yep. that's that's a nice figure. I mean, the Bumblebee has some issues, but the Prime, that's a really nice figure. And this yeah. is the Alternative Cliff Jumper. So lots and of Alternity in that box. Just the three one, just the three. Uh, electronic intercom telephone system. Oh, I haven't nice. seen that in years. I wow. That. I remember seeing one of those at a show one time. That was a long time ago, though. Uh, yeah. I remember I remember seeing those in stores, especially because no. we because we had a Best and Brindles, which was a catalog showroom. Nothing chain. like talking into Optimus Prime's crotch. <laughs> <laughs> three three things here. Three last things. This Back is the then, when, it, when it wasn't wrong. Uh, paper trailer off the Transformers Junior Optimus Prime. Ah, yeah, I've actually got the Junior right up here. So. Uh, Transformers. Bumblebee G1 reissue keychain. I mean, remember from, when those uh, came out? That was like, all. yeah. When, when the, remember when those came out? It was like, yeah, we're getting like reissued. You know, eh. Let's see. I have I've, I've uh, nowadays you can find, find a KO for like ten bucks. <laughs> who can who can identify the sticker sheet? Uh, Octane. Is that Octane? Uh, wait, that, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it up. Uh, the teal makes it look like. Six no, shot. that is no. That's not six shot. That six looks shot. like uh, maybe Leo's uh, uh, egg. Uh, let me see. Maybe? Needle nose. Yeah, might be either needle nose or Leo's egg. I'm looking I, at the colors. Yeah, I think, it, I think that it, was that was the thing I was kind of looking for when I said yeah. six shot was a. Yes, yeah, so when I said no, six um, shot was a lot bigger. Yeah, it's a needle what? nose. It's needle nose because I have my carded needle nose right over there, and it's yep. it's needle nose. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the wings, and there is a one piece with the Decepticon as the exact same shape. So, yeah. and uh, last but not least, uh, Cobra Buzzbore <laughs> in the box. <laughs> Random <laughs> with the uh, get the fridge. Oh wow! Oh, with the fridge patch oh. on well, it. <laughs> it's so. like totally irrelevant uh, now today. People's be like, you know, who's the fridge? Who's the fridge? <laughs> yeah. He's but, you know, he's a diabetic kid. That's who he is. Yeah, but uh, it's weird. I miss some of that GI. I mean, I, I never collected GI Joe to any degree, but they always had some of the best boxes, the best looking box yeah. art. Just, I mean, just really some stellar box art. Headmaster Don always checking out boxes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of speaking of boxes, I've got my own box. Uh oh, so, he's mobile. Yeah. So speaking yeah, of boxes, he he stands up and turns his ass to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one thing in the box, but it's clones. Oh, ah! nice. I've been looking for them. Yep, I gotta check my other Walgreens. I have it. Yep. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm yep. getting the Takara ones. So <sighs> I don't like the I don't like the Autobot colors. They're accurate to the show. But that's not saying much when they're two tones <laughs> red. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's uh, found these, and I found uh, R.I.D. to like I said I found R.I.D. to Inferno and Power of the Primes Dreadwind. That's Come all. On. That's the only power. But also, uh, my friend Blade Raider uh, found the Legends are showing up now. He found yes. Slash and Beachcomber. So the Legends are also showing up at Targets as well. And um, uh, I know somebody who found Slash, Beachcomber, and uh, Windcharger. I think the first wave. Yeah, I hope that Windcharger is better too. Yeah, I hope, I hope that Windcharger is better in person because it just did not look good in photos. <sighs> look good in the one photo I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I hope it's a lot better than the Combiner Wars because that yeah. one was okay. Well, hey Rick, I got a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. Why is all of the stock? Uh, why is so much of the stock photos coming out from Hasbro transformed wrong and just because the people that photograph good? it don't care? The people yeah. who photograph it are not the designers. I mean, the designers are well, never there. Yeah, but during your from the paint shop, yeah, to the designer, designer signs off on it. From there, it goes to the photo studio. 
photo people take pictures of it, they get emailed the instructions from the designer, and they try and figure out how to transform it. But what what you have what you have again is the is the QC there that I'm talking about. Those photos can because you've seen the way some of the Takara photos come out, like Ironhide. Mm-hmm. Nobody liked Masterpiece Ironhide when we first saw the pictures because it was such a crappy photo job, and it seemed like you would want th- unless they're physically not able to be there because of distance or something. No, but if it, no. If they're it's... if they're in the same building, like they could say, "Hey, we're shooting these photos today. Come by and make sure the figure is done properly." So we can, you know, they can pose what, the figure. What did we just talk about? We talked about um, this know, just... whole jazz thing is to put even more restrictions and yeah. create more things for people to do. That's They're already overworked, and there's only so many hours in the day, and they're already stretched very well, thin. I guess so I'm they looking can't be at... everywhere at the same place, and, yeah, and I... that's, that is a criticism. I guess I'm just looking at it from a marketing standpoint is these are the photos you're going to publish to get people to buy this product. And if your photos look like crap, don't you think that's going to hurt the sales to some degree? It may be a marginal it may be a marginal negative, but it still could be a positive with just making sure, hey, let's make sure his crotch is on the wrong side or something. Remember, Don, the power of positivity. I've never been positive. I work retail. I've not been positive. Duran, real quick. Um, Shield or New Day tomorrow? I'm going to go with the New Day. I I, I'm going to go with the New Day, too. I think I, that's going to be an upset. I can't stand the Shield. But anyway. Um, I'm the opposite. I can't stand New Day. I, I love the Shield. Hey, what are y'all talking about? Wrestling. 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 Uh, wrestling. I have. I. I never watched wrestling except when Sergeant Slaughter was wrestling. And that Don. Was really Don. You, you were on. Uh, you were on two podcasts. That the the person that behind is behind the podcast is a huge wrestling fan. So just get over it. Just get on board. I just never. The only time I watched wrestling is when, like I said, when Sergeant Slaughter was wrestling, and that was just infrequent. I. I kind of preferred American Gladiators. <laughs> oh, get the. God damn it, Don. Okay, the they're classic. Just, the there's classic. just something about Nitro that really, really got him going, you know? <laughs> well, well, in my defense, both wrestling and American Gladiators came on before Elvira. Mm-hmm. So, there's that. <laughs> I think I hurt Rick with that. <laughs> yeah, He's yeah. like, why do I have to deal with this? Up for pre-order right now is my latest book, um, The Unofficial Guide to Vintage Transformers. This is a coffee table book, not a parts guide. It's filled with pictures and with insights. And um, Lots of pretty pictures. Lots of pretty pictures, like, like this stuff here, this page. That looks so it's familiar. Got, it's, got, uh, it's got other pictures in it, like, um, like this one. Hmm. And uh, this one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, uh, uh, a young man named Duran Land took eighty uh, percent of the photographs for this book. Nice. Uh, by uh, 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 a certain Orson Christensen of Captain <laughs> Prey. Orson uh, Christensen. <laughs> what's it, what's it? He's Christian. He's he's a he's he's a Christian. Ouch, and I'm having a cramp. <laughs> oh, God. You know what? <laughs> cramp. <laughs> you know what? Okay. Okay. You know what? I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure I spelled his name right in the book. Christian. Hey. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? Hasbro? Please tell me you spelled his name right. <laughs> At least the logos for TF, for Tiflip Tiff are Lip. in there. <laughs> and did I spell his name right? Christian. Gotta find it first. H-O-R-S-O-N, right? Yes. H is silent? H-O-R-S-O-N? Yes. Yeah, H is silent, yeah. Yes. Okay, well, Rick, you were saying from having to white out every copy and then rewrite it in. (laughs) I don't don't care how many mistakes are in that book. So anyway, go to Amazon, type in Rick Alvarez, R-I-K, and uh, 
pre-order that pre-order book. Pre-order it. And, uh, we, sh- uh, we shared it on the TFYLP group, so there should be a link on there as well. So. And, uh, now, there's one other thing I want to uh, um, alert to our viewers and our listeners. Um, December 16th, we're looking at as our final show of the, uh, the calendar year 2016. I'm sorry, 2017. Uh, I mean, get, get, get with the year here. Um, <laughs> and that is always our holiday show. Um, going to try to do something a little bit different with it, but uh, still in the, in, the, in the formative stages of it. Uh, and then we will take off uh, the, the remainder of the uh, calendar year and then come back sometime after the beginning of the uh, year 2018. Uh, so be aware of that. Also, with the holidays coming up, um, you know, uh, episodes may be a little bit more sporadic. Uh, as such, like last week, uh, you know, we had some staffing issues and weren't able to get on. Um, and next weekend is Thanksgiving, so there will be no episode next weekend. Uh, uh, just so allow for, uh, you know, our cast members to be able to travel and spend time with their families. Uh, so be aware of that. Uh, also, I don't have a family. Don't have a family. Um, I, I want to ask the. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, I have a family. I just don't like them. <laughs> I, I do want to ask the the listeners and the viewers of TFYLP, what is your thoughts? Uh, and this is a change that I'm considering uh, going forward from uh, the beginning of 2018. And that is making TFYLP a bi-weekly podcast uh, in that it is very difficult for us as a, uh, as a group of guys to be able to get together every single week and have availability every single week. I know Don and, uh, and myself, Rick, a lot of the times, uh, we're available, but you know we have a lot of other cast members that aren't available every single week. And... Um, it's just extremely difficult to be able to get together a podcast uh, on a weekly basis. Um, that being said, we right now we're not going to go to a, a bi-weekly podcast, but I'm wondering what you guys would think about going to a pod uh, a, a bi-weekly podcast. Uh, if if you think it would be a good idea, if uh, you wouldn't be bothered by it at all, please let me know. Uh, especially on Twitter or on on our Facebook group, um, you know, I'm also looking at making a. Um, oop, oh, got me. I've got a backup disc full issue. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've also like got a personal problem. Yes, I've 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 also got um, an idea of going to the uh, the biweekly podcast uh, to further free up my personal time on the weekends uh gives me a a a weekend off at least um at least once a month um so there's there is some motivation behind it it's not us trying to get lazy it's not us just you know uh, we're not burning out or anything it's just making it easier for us to produce this show uh and quite frankly there are times whenever transformers uh news and and things get kind of slow and it's hard to come up with topics and we've had so many great topics um so it's it's hard to think well what have we not talked about on this show i mean we're approaching 300 episodes so you know we've we've talked about quite a quite a few uh quite a few topics on on this on this podcast and the thing and the thing is Duran, like we've said in the past you, you we just don't want to do a bunch of news that everybody's seen because so many places are covering that mm-hmm. and it's important but well f- a lot of when, when i was at when i was at tfcon a lot of people were coming up and who watched the show and several people said that they liked the discussion format that we have well for example tonight we talked about things that were in the news but not specifically that, uh, that they are the news uh yeah. it just happened to be uh, a discussion topic surrounding what was in the news uh we're, to, uh currently yeah we're kind of like face the nation but not as depressing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. yes face- jack for those for I- you face the nation is a, a news program that uh 
it's, it's been around for quite a new. Yeah. It comes, on, it, it comes on after Sunday morning. Jack, how old are you? Are you of drinking age? Two years up. You're, let's say well, 98. Wisconsin's yeah. thinking yeah. about lowering it to 19. So yeah. it, the, it's weird. His, <laughs> his state is thinking about lowering their standards. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> I uh, think no they're just trying the to attract says. people to work to live there. Because I remember yeah. when my wife was looking for work, they're like, oh, you can make, uh, you know, six figures over here. But in Wisconsin, you could make like 800000 but you got to live in Wisconsin. Uh, I don't. I but don't. they have the best cheese. I do love cheese. I love cutting cheese. I see. I'm a Brie man, so I don't think they oh, have okay. it out well, there. Well, well, Jack, let me Jack, let me ask this. I'll move to Wisconsin, but can I still get my Velveeta? Do you still That's have Velveeta up there? Cheese. Yes, we do. That's yes. Not okay. Walmart's have it. Our Walmart's have it. Yep. All right. Good. Actually, I thought maybe it might be. I thought maybe it might be like Persona non grata in Wisconsin or something, because because you know, as long as, as long as I get my cheese and my Miracle Whip, I'm good. <laughs> yep, we got both. You're good. Well, you know, uh, again, I want to ask the question to the listeners and the fans of TFYLP. Please let me know what your thoughts on going to a bi-weekly podcast would be. Uh, You know, do you think it would be a good idea for us? Um, And, you know, it's it may or may not happen, but it's it's something that I'm considering, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we got a little more than a month before uh, the end of the year. And then whenever we come back uh, the first or second uh, week of 2018, uh, you know, that would be a great time to start a new uh, new scheduling uh, of our show. So I'd, I'd like to know what you guys think. You know, please let me know. Uh, Twitter, at TFYLP, on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Um, just please let me know uh, one way or the other. Um you know, if you don't like it, please. Uh, you know, you can you can let me know that way. If you do like it, don't care. You know, at least let me know something. Um, so, without further ado, if you guys have another, if 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 you quit farting on yourselves, <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Yes. Um, we will see you next time on TFYLP. Good night, everybody. Take care, y'all. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.